Hi, in this video we will be looking at the reducing balance method of depreciation. So in the previous video we looked at the straight line method and we noted some of the reasons why we'd use that, but sometimes this method is more relevant to a specific asset. We have also looked in previous videos at just depreciation in general and some key terms, so check out those videos if you have not yet as they will give some background into what we're going to be discussing here. So, reducing balance depreciation, as we can see in this bullet point here, well, what it says is that each year a smaller depreciation charge will be applied to the asset. So, the first year that we have the asset, that's when we're going to charge the highest amount of depreciation to it, and as we go on in time each year, we're going to have a slightly smaller depreciation charge. The reason why this is more applicable to some assets than the straight line depreciation method, well, we can look at an, ex an example, and the one we've been using in a few of these videos has been the car. And we can imagine that as soon as we roll this, or we drive it out of the car dealership, it is going to decrease in value quite substantially just on the first day that we use it because it goes from being a new car to an old car. So it makes sense to have a high depreciation charge for let's say the first year that we own the car, and then all the subsequent years, they're gonna have slightly lower levels of depreciation. So the reducing balance method is usually going to be our best option here. And there are of course lots, lots of other examples of where we'd use this method, but I won't go into every single instance that we'd use it. So if we want to formalize this a bit more in some sort of mathematical equation, this is our equation for the reducing balance method. So what we want to calculate as with the straight line method is the annual charge that we're going to put into our accounts. What What is our annual amount of depreciation? And we have what our equation here is, is we have x percent, so we choose some percentage of an asset to depreciate each year, and we multiply that by the carrying amount for our asset. Now, what is the carrying amount? Well, it, that's given here. So it's the original cost of the asset minus any accumulated depreciation that we have on the asset. So this will make a little bit more sense if you aren't familiar with carrying amount in when we go through our example, which I'll do get to in a minute. But basically, if we just consider that we had a £1,000 asset and each year we wanted to depreciate it by 10%, well, this X percent, this X is just going to be 10 for this example. And our original cost is going to be 1000 So in the first year, we just depreciate by 10%. And so our asset will depreciate to 900 and then this 900 is our carrying amount. And that is just 1,000 minus 100, which is our accumulated depreciation. As we go on into the next year, we then depreciate by 10% again, and we'd get to, well, 810, because 10% 10 of 900 is 90. And so this 810 just comes from 100 minus, no, 1,000 minus 100 minus 90, and that will give us 810. So it's our original cost, the 1,000, minus the, well, the sum of all the depreciations we've had in the previous years. And so that's going to give us our depreciation charge. But we will, hopefully this will make a bit more sense when we go through our example. Before we get to that example, a quick thing to note is that with the straight line method, we did something called apportioning where if we only own the asset for, say, part of a year, say we owned it for six months, we would only apply six months worth of depreciation in the first year that we own the asset because, well, it's not the first year we've owned the asset, it's we've only owned it for six months in our financial year. So it made sense that we only applied six months worth of depreciation. However, this is not something we do with the reducing balance method and well, because we use a percentage and we're depreciating by a fixed percentage each year, it doesn't really work and it's not really as easy to do this. 
So instead, the way to get around this is that we apply a full year of depreciation in the first year that the asset is owned, and then we charge no depreciation in the year that the asset is sold or that we stop using the asset. If we might not sell it, we might just dispose of it. But we don't apply any depreciation in that final year. So obviously this means we depreciate the asset a bit quicker to begin with because we might only own the asset for say three months in our first financial year of owning the asset, but we still apply a full year's worth of depreciation to it. And that's just, well, that's just how we define the reducing balance method. We, we need to define something here just to give us consistency in our account. So remember that we are applying a full year of depreciation in the first year the asset is owned, even if we don't own it for a full year. So now that that's out of the way, we can have a look at an example. So we're back with ABC Limited, and we suppose that they purchase an asset for £20,000, and they do this on the 1st of January in 2021. As we say, we don't need to apportion our depreciation, so really the year is the only thing that matters uh, too much with reducing balance. With straight line, we had to look at the date in particular, but we can just kind of focus that, okay, we're starting in 2021. Depreciation is charged using the reducing balance method, of course, and it's going to be at 20%. So if we remember, if I just scroll back up, I probably should have pulled this equation down, but our depreciation charge is X percent times by the carrying amount. And here, clearly X is going to be 20 in this example. What is the depreciation charge for the year ended 31st of December 2023? And that's our key is just the year again, 2023. So how do we go about doing this? Well, what we're going to have to do is figure out what our carrying balance is each year. So we're going to have to depreciate for 2021, which is the first year, then 2022, and then 2023 to get our final answer. So we are starting off with an asset that costs £20,000 and we're depreciating it at 20%. So we do that. This is our carrying amount. It's going to be the initial cost because if we remember carrying, carrying amount is going to be equal to cost minus, and I'm not going to be able to fit this in properly, but minus accumulated depreciation. I'll just abbreviate that. And so in our first year of owning the asset, we have no accumulated depreciation. So lucky for us, this is going to be a zero. And our carrying amount is just going to be the cost. And from the question, we know that the cost of this asset is £20,000. So in 2021, our depreciation charge is just 20,000 times 20%, which is 4,000. Now, for now, we have to carry this forward to 2022. And in order to get our carrying amount for 2022, we're again going to use this equation over here. Our carrying amount is equal to the cost. And this cost is always going to be 20,000. But now we do have some accumulated depreciation. In 2021, we well depreciated by 4,000. So for 2022, we have accumulated depreciation of 4,000, so our carrying amount is 20,000 minus 4,000, which gives us 16,000 pounds as our carrying amount. So again, in 2022, we're gonna do the same exercise again, carrying amount times X percent, which is 20, and this will come out as 3,200 pounds. And again, same method, carrying amount for 2023, it's gonna be our cost, which is 20,000, minus our accumulated depreciation, which is 4,000, and now plus this 3,200 we've got from 2022. So our carrying amount is 20,000 minus 7,200, which is 12,800 pounds. We carry this amount across to 2023 in order to finally answer the question, what is the depreciation charge in the year 2023? Well, it's just our carrying amount times by 20%, and this will give us the answer of £2,560, and that is the question answered. 
And this may seem like a long-winded method, but I've sort of, well, gone a bit overboard with the methodology here just to hopefully accurately demonstrate how this method works. But in reality, we can make this a lot quicker in order to, we can see that we start with £20,000 and we're depreciating at 20%. Well, in order to get, we can just skip this depreciation step and get straight to the carrying amount by just doing 20,000 times 0.8. Instead of going times 0.2 and then subtracting it, we just do 20,000 times 0.8 and it's still 16,000. If we want to get a carrying amount that is, well, multiple years in the future, we can do 20,000 times 0.8 squared and we will then just skip this year and go straight to this next year and we'll get 12,800 and then we just need to multiply that by our 0 0.2 to get our answer. So there are shortcuts you can take. I think the safest bet is in an exam to just write out all the steps and you won't necessarily make a mistake that way. But note that this doesn't necessarily take a very long time to do. And especially for questions where we're talking about, say, 10, 20 years in the future, it'll be quicker to just multiply by 0.8 or whatever it is, and then raise it to the power of how many, however many years in the future you need to depreciate. But that is the reducing balance method. I hope that made some sense and this video was useful. If it was at all useful, please do leave a like rating. Make sure to check out the playlist, the accounting playlist for, say, the previous video on straight line depreciation or the next videos on similar topics like this one. And of course, subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.